Do you feel like you should be further along in your financial journey? Are you constantly wishing your money situation was different? Not to sound too harsh, but what are you doing about it? Because the cold hard truth is that you, and only you, are responsible for how things turn out in your life and in your finances. You have the power to stop holding yourself back with your money. And I know it's easier said than done, but that doesn't mean that it can't or that it shouldn't be done. In today's episode, I'm sharing six ways you can stop holding yourself back with your money and start feeling like you're making progress towards the life you really want. Welcome to the City Girl Savings Podcast. I'm Raya Reeves, founder and finance coach of City Girl Savings. I turned my life around with budgeting many years ago, and now I'm on a mission to help others do the same. I fully believe that you can enjoy your life on a budget, and this weekly show will focus on the intersection of money and the City Girl lifestyle. Join me every week, along with some special guests, as I share my experiences, advice, and guidance on navigating life and money as an experience-loving millennial. Now, the first thing you can do to stop holding yourself back with your money is change your mindset. The beauty of changing your mindset is that you have full control. You can decide to see your money and the world in a positive or a negative light. You can decide if you want to look at the glass as half empty or half full. And you can decide to make the most out of any situation you're in. Changing your mindset is a conscious decision that you have full control over. I will admit, it is a decision that does take some effort, especially if you're used to thinking negatively. However, when you do change your mindset from one of negativity to one of positivity, from one of scarcity to one of abundance, or from seeing the glass as half empty to seeing it as half full, you will stop holding yourself back when it comes to your money. Changing your mindset allows you to see opportunities and solutions, not just problems. You will be able to get out of your own way and shift your focus to doing the things that will actually help you get ahead. Change your mindset and you will change your life. Now, I highly recommend you listen to the Life Coach School podcast. It's such a great resource for thought management and shifting your perspective. I personally love it. Now, the next thing that you can do to stop holding yourself back with your money is step out of your comfort zone. I hate to break it to you, but no huge change in life will come from doing the same things you've already done. And unfortunately, Nothing worth having comes from your comfort zone. It's way too safe there. Most successful people learn to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. They learn to take risks even when they don't know the outcome. And when it comes to your money or your life at that, you have to be willing to do what you've never done to get what you've never had. You cannot become debt-free if you keep racking up charges on your credit cards. You need to get uncomfortable and just cut them up and cut your expenses down to size. You will not be able to stop holding yourself back until you take new risks and try new things, even if they scare you. And this is something that I personally work on all the time. In fact, I've gotten to a point where I welcome being uncomfortable because I know that there's a new level on the other side of it. And I choose to see it that way instead of choosing to see it as something that just gives me complete anxiety. So start looking at being uncomfortable as a good thing, as a sign that you're moving in the right direction. If you want to stop holding yourself back with your money, consider working with a therapist, a coach, or an advisor. After working with countless women on budgeting, on controlling their spending, and reaching their financial goals, I can honestly say that some bad money habits have deeper roots than mere impulse. In fact, most of them do. 
Money is tied to so many things. It's tied to our upbringing, our financial status, our social status, our well-being, our emotions, and so much more. It is so important to understand how your deeper-seated issues with money come out in the form of bad money behavior. In fact, it's important to understand how your deeper-rooted issues, even if they're not related to money, come out in the form of bad money behavior. You can't know or take care of those issues until you work with someone who can ask you the right questions to help you identify what's really going on there. So if you think your bad money habits are potentially tied to things you learned from your parents or from your upbringing, consider working with a therapist. Maybe they can help you get to those childhood traumas that you need to to fix your money behavior. If you see your bad spending habits as a justification for how hard you work or for what you weren't able to have in the past, consider hiring a financial coach. Either way, working with a professional will help you get out of your own way. And if you're paying for it, you're more likely to do the work to improve. Honesty time. Money management is not rocket science. It just feels that way because we tie our emotions, experiences, and sometimes our self-worth to our money. That needs to change, and I'm on a mission to help drive that change. In my new free masterclass, I'm sharing three cold, hard facts you need to know to shift your money perspective and finally start seeing results in your situation. I'm going to show you how to level up your finances so you can begin to see forward progress with your goals and have something to show for the money you work so hard for. The masterclass is only here for a short time and it's happening soon. So save your spot now by going to citygirlsavings.com forward slash masterclass. I can't wait to see you there. Another thing you can do to stop holding yourself back with your money is get clear on what you really want out of life. This is a theme across my podcast because having that end result or having a vision of what you want your end life to look like is so important. Do you feel stuck in your current situation or do you feel like you can't move forward? The thing is, you may not be stuck. In fact, you just may be lacking direction. So instead of you actually being stuck, you may just not have the right direction. Have you ever taken the time to just sit down and really think about what you want out of life? And more importantly, have you written those things down? If you haven't ever thought about what you want from life, you may find yourself miserable in the day-to-day routines that you're currently in. But once you get clear on what you want and where you're going, you will quickly become unstuck. You'll stop holding yourself back and start moving in the direction of the things you want most. So take some time to imagine your dream life. If money were no object, what would your life be like? How do you want it to feel? How do you want it to look? How do you look? How do you feel? Be as clear as possible and get specific and write it all down. It's okay if it changes in the next few years. Get it on paper now. Then once you have that end life written down, start putting the actions in place that will help you get there. Please know that it's not going to happen overnight, but it will never ever happen if you don't make a plan. As time goes by, you'll get closer and closer to where you want to be. Another thing you can do to stop holding yourself back with your money is to stop complaining about things. Nothing good ever came from complaining. If you feel like you're holding yourself back when it comes to your finances, I promise you complaining is not going to help. In fact, complaining can actually make you feel worse, especially because you are complaining to other people who may validate your negative feelings instead of supporting you in finding solutions. Some people are just so lacking in awareness of their own complaining that it becomes their form of socializing, almost like a conversational complainer. It's like our brains want to do the same things over and over, and we value repetition. So if we're constantly complaining, we're going to keep constantly complaining. So if you're a habitual complainer, it can be hard to break the cycle, but it's not impossible. Start by paying attention to what you're saying when you're conversing. If you find yourself complaining, 
to someone else or to yourself. Stop and reframe the topic in a more constructive way. Try sharing what you're happy about as it relates to the situation instead. Here's an example. Instead of saying, I'm not happy with the amount of money I make, reframe it to say, I'm grateful that I have money coming in and I'm going to look for ways to make more. Trust me, a shift in perspective goes a long way. And the final way you can stop holding yourself back with your money is by avoiding the comparison trap. As the saying goes, comparison is the thief of joy. If you want to stop holding yourself back with your money, you have to stop comparing your situation to others. Unless you have some sort of secret insight into another person's finances, and I'm talking about bank statements, credit card receipts, etc., then you really don't know what another person has. Too often, and especially thanks to social media, we are comparing our worst situation to someone else's best. And here's the thing, no one is going to flaunt their lack of savings or their sky-high auto loan on social media, right? Instead, they want to show off their cool vacations and their sweet new car. But without full insight into the whole picture, we can wind up with a skewed comparison that only makes us feel bad. It's important to check yourself, okay? Know that people are putting their best out on social media, not their worst. So do not compare your negative situation to someone else's positive because you really don't know. Instead, try focusing on your own goals, on your own progress, and focus on what you have now and where you want to be in the future. If you're not happy with something, take the steps you need to to change it and only measure success against your own standards. Now, I know that each of the points I made in this episode are not easy to implement. Otherwise, there would be no need for this episode. But I promise you they are worth working towards. You can break free from your own financial chains. And trust me, life is so much better on the other side. Thank you so much for tuning in to City Girl Savings today. I hope you feel empowered and inspired to master your money as you make your way to your dream life. Make sure you subscribe so you're the first to know when a new episode comes out. I truly value your thoughts and feedback, so please leave a review and let me know how this podcast has impacted you. Can't wait to chat soon and make it a great day.